Well, as is customary here at the Amex Stadium, we've got Fat Boy Slim blasting out on the PA system. Big Brighton fan, of course. He'll be tuning into our coverage. I'm absolutely sure about that. It's often been said there is no such thing as home advantage this season. Perhaps these two teams are the greatest illustration of that. Brighton's last three Premier League victories here at the Amex have been strewn across three different calendar years. Leicester, meanwhile, have already lost more games at the King Power than in the whole of the last campaign, but have been imperious on the road. If the Foxes can avoid defeat this evening, they'll be just one game shy of equaling their club record of 14 away matches unbeaten in all competitions. With Manchester United not in action until tomorrow, Leicester can also move up to second in the table with a win, while for Brighton the incentive is putting clear daylight between them and the relegation places. All in all, David Connolly, it's a huge game at both ends of the table. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Obviously, I guess uh, for Leicester, they can go second before the United game tomorrow, um, open up a little bit of a gap towards them, and, and I think obviously if Brighton can pick up three points here before Newcastle kick off, then obviously it's a similar sort of tale at the under, other end of the table. So yeah, it's a massive game, and I think it's one that maybe both sides, I mean, we heard the betting, didn't we, where, you know, it was surprising that Brighton are the favourites. Yeah. But... Uh, that's quite incredible considering Leicester are third. Yeah, it's quite incredible. Pro probably a reflection of, uh, of the injury problems that, that Leicester have suffered, but Brighton no strangers in that department either, which brings us seamlessly onto the team news. The two sets of players, by the way, have just emerged from the tunnel, what, 20 yards below us here in the main stand at this superb Amex Stadium. Uh, Aaron Connolly, the latest absentee for the Seagulls. So Adam Lallana starts his first Premier League game of 2021. That's the only change from the side beaten at West Bromwich Albion last time out when Brighton, of course, missed not one but two penalties. It's Sanchez in goal, Veltman, White, Dunk and Byrne in defence. Then come Gross and Basuma, deepest in midfield, Trossard, McAllister and Lallana in behind Neil Mope up front. As for Leicester, two alterations from the side that drew at Burnley in midweek. Wesley Fofana starts, while Sidney Tavares makes his full Premier League debut. Papi Mendy and Hamza Chowdhury are the two players who drop to the bench. It will be Schmeichel in goal, starting his 104th Premier League game in a row. Amate, Fofana and Sayunchu in defence. Ricardo, Tillemans and Didi, Tavares and Castagna across midfield with Kelechi Iannaccio and Jamie Vardy paired together up front. Jamie Vardy, by the way, has scored nine goals away from home this season. If he can make it ten tonight, he will become only the second player in Premier League history alongside Harry Kane to get into double figures on the road for five successive seasons. As a former striker yourself, David Connolly, I'm sure that is a stat that you are full of admiration yeah, for. Absolutely great numbers. And what, what a centre forward who, as we know, we looked at him a lot, you know, feeds off relative scraps, you know, doesn't really get involved in the game that much. Brendan wants him to stay away and I'm sure that'll be the case today. Maybe Iron Ash will be the one that'll be dropping in deep. But obviously, because there's two up there, you know, they can alternate that and they will be a threat to that Brighton back line. Make no mistake. And obviously, Jamie Vardy, incredible. Absolutely incredible. It is a perfect night here at the Amex Stadium. The pitch in pristine condition. There is a chill in the air. I'm reliably informed that temperatures will drop below zero by the time that we're finished. Let's hope the action in front of us is enough to uh, warm us inside. It's already been a very busy day across the TalkSport network, as it always is on game day. We started with Burnley 1. Arsenal won this morning, live and exclusive on TalkSport. A couple of uh, big VAR decisions at the end of that game, but ultimately Arsenal dropping two more points in their pursuit of European football. We had a massive win in the three o'clock kickoff in the Premier League. Sheffield United nil, Southampton 2, uh, another of David Conley's old clubs, probably just about safe in the Premier League now. And a few minutes ago, uh, it finished over on TalkSport in a Midlands matchup. We can't call it a derby, but it finished Aston Villa nil, uh, Wolves nil. So Aston Villa um, also now seemingly facing an uphill task, despite the fact they've got games in hand to bring European football back to Villa Park. The floodlights shining brightly here at the Amex. We are just about ready for kickoff. It will be Leicester all in purple, shooting from right to left in this first half to get us underway. The big TV screens at either end of the stadium are counting down from 10 to 0. That will be the signal for referee Michael Oliver to blow his first whistle, upon which all of the players, coaching staff and even the subs down below us uh, take a knee as we've become used to seeing before every Premier League match. 
And on the second whistle, Leicester do get us underway here in the heart of the Sussex Downs. Brighton in their blue shirts, white shorts and blue socks attacking the goal. Away to our right, we're under normal circumstances. The mass halls of Leicester fans would no doubt be gathered and hopefully we aren't too far away now. Certainly in time for the start of next season from seeing these stands full to capacity. And there will be more seats inside the Amex Stadium next season as well. 32,500 the capacity is being raised to that was announced only about an hour or so ago just makes it all the more important that they stave off the threat of those sides breathing down their necks Brighton and establish themselves as a Premier League team for the foreseeable future here is uh, Alexis McAllister the young Argentine plays it out to the left hand side the Andrew Trossard in the white boots cuts infield and sprays a neat ball out to this right touch line and Joel Veltman a £1 million bargain buy from Ajax over the course of the summer transfer window. He is uh, a mainstay in the team now because of the injury to Tariq Lamptey. They were hoping Brighton that Lamptey might be fit to recover and return from his hamstring injury for this game, but has suffered a setback in training and may well face uh, a few more weeks on the sidelines. Pascal Gross with a cross into the area. Brighton starting on the front foot, cleared only as far as Dan Byrne now. McAllister, 10 yards outside the box, plays it out to the right once more in Veltman. Leicester very early on here, a pen back inside their own half. Here is McAllister wearing the black gloves, he plays it back into the centre circle and Lewis Dunk, the Brighton captain, Byrne out to the left-hand side. Seagull dominating possession here into Mope, who brings it down the chest inside the penalty area. McAllister had some space on the edge of the box, but... In the end, Leicester managed to smuggle it back to their goalkeeper, Schmeichel. It's not the most convincing appearances, and Brighton have a throw. David Connolly. Yeah, he just shanked it out of play there, but just looking at Brighton, it's another confident start. Every time I come here, I see a similar sort of performance. They work the ball from one side to the other. Dan Byrne, you know, on the underlap, playing very, very high. And just looking at where Lalana's sort of position, he's just off the front. So, you know, Trossard looks like on the left wing, and Gross on the right. Leicester coming forward really for the first time. Vardy out to the right-hand side. It's a sweeping pass that's brought under control by Kelechi Iheanacho. It was Dan Byrne back defending and conceding the first corner of the evening. That's how quickly this Leicester side have the ability to turn defence into attack. One minute they're under siege on the edge of their own penalty area. The next they have a corner and a chance to put pressure on this Brighton goal. Yeah, we've seen a lot of these corners for Brighton in terms of, despite their height, the amount of goals, the volume of goals they concede from set pieces. I think it's one of the highest in the league and, you know, obviously cost them against West Brom as well. Yuri Tillemans, who's been in excellent form of late for Leicester, will go across the right-hand side and take this corner. He puts both arms in the air and it's played to around about the penalty spot, headed away by Dan Byrne, Tavares wearing number 50 on the back of his Leicester shirt, plays it back into the centre circle, and now they've gone all the way back to the green-shirted Kasper Schmeichel. Good distribution from Schmeichel, a raking pass out to the right-hand side, kept in by Tillemans, in fact not quite, it was a very late flag from the assistant, I think in the end he's been penalised for handball, and it will be a free kick for Brighton, seven or eight yards outside their own penalty area. Well, they defended that set piece a lot better, Brighton, which would be a concern for Potter in terms of the height they've got. That they have allowed so many goals to go in the back of the net from those set piece situations. They should score more from yeah. set piece as well. I was speaking to Adam Webster, another of the uh, absentees tonight for Brighton. He was telling me that his girlfriend had given him a bit of a rollicking because he keeps going up for set pieces and doesn't score enough goals. Uh, that's when you know you've got problems. Here is uh, Pascal Gross, 15 yards inside Brighton territory on the near right-hand side. He sweeps it out to the left and Dan Byrne controls it from the sky on the chest. And this is Trossard, going to have a run at Ricardo. He comes infield, Leandro Trossard, and then arrows the pass into the feet of Pascal Gross. He brings it neatly under control. Gross with a low ball into the area, deflects off and Didi. And just for a moment, Schmeichel came racing out of his goal, but it spins behind for Brighton's first corner of the game. Yeah, they've worked this well, I think, so far in this game in terms of moving the ball from one side to the other. Just trying to stretch Leicester. I think Gross trying to find the feet of Lalana in the box. Just took a little, little nick that's gone out for a corner. They are vulnerable from defending set pieces. Leicester have conceded a lot of goals from corners and free kicks this season. You only have to look at our football editor, Jason Bourne's Twitter feed to know that. Here is uh, Pascal Gross, he's a big Leicester fan, Jason. In comes the corner from the right towards the far post, looking for Lewis Dunk. Headed away by Amate. Dunk volleys it back towards goal, but it's behind. And it will be a goal kick 
for Leicester. I think set pieces could be really important, David, tonight. Yeah. Well, as they always are, you know, and sort of all these little details count. And le look, Leicester know that because David Luiz got Arsenal back in the game from a well worked one. They obviously spotted a little weakness in terms of how Leicester marked zonally, not man to man. So he can get a little block on and do something clever. Dan Byrne, by the way, must be the biggest left back ever to have played professional football. I mean, it, it could be the subject of a David Attenborough documentary. It's incredible. Uh, <laughs> Dan Byrne, with his stature and traditionally a centre half, has become a very accomplished fullback. He has. He really has. I mean, he plays. He's played numerous positions, but you know that's probably his best. Left-sided of a back three, but he's allowed to the license to bomb forward, and obviously he's got those big long legs, so he covers the ground really quickly in, in both ways. It's been a problem area for Brighton this season, and without both the uh, first choice fullbacks, Tarek Lamptey, we've mentioned Solly March, who's had an excellent uh, campaign, largely as left wing back. I mean, Luke, you saw, I think, against the Liverpool, where you know Trent Alexander Arnold lost him at the back post, and you know he had a hand in the goal down burn. So it's a good ball forward though for Brighton. Pascal Gross into the penalty area. Mopes peeled away to the far post, and it's turned behind in the end by Fafana. It could have. Almost snuck into the bottom corner for Farner. It looks cool and collected. It was originally a pass fizzed into the feet of Adam Lallana. Released Pascal Gross down that right-hand side. It's excellent defending, but it's only just past the uh, the left-hand post and away for a corner. Yeah, fantastic football, though. They moved the ball so sharp, Brighton. Really vibrant start from the Seagulls. Graham Potter watching on the Brighton manager. No more than... 30 yards or so below us, very close to the technical areas here, our commentary position, in comes the corner, Dank with the left footed volley, blocked away and over the bar from McAllister, he's claiming a deflection, I think the referee, Michael Oliver, is articulating there was a handball anyway, either way it's going to be a Leicester kick David. Yeah, but it's promising again from Brighton, look they, they maybe didn't make the most of that, the most convincing clearance from Jamie Vardy in that near post zone, but eventually fall to the and the ball, a dunk, the and ball did ricochet off Lewis Dunk's arm and nice it's important arm, yeah. to mention that because there was controversy wasn't there in midweek when Fulham had a goal against Tottenham ruled out when Lamina unwittingly handled inside the penalty area the rules were applied correctly but it's been announced uh, over the last 24 hours by IFAB the uh, lawmakers that that handball rule will change uh, David Conley from July the 1st yeah. if, if the contact is accidental inside the penalty area then the goal will stand and, that, and that's sensible isn't it that's just common Absolutely. sense yeah but it can change earlier it's just up to the leagues to decide that so if the Premier League wanted to you know they could they I could guess that would that. bring in the question of integrity if you start changing the well, rules halfway through the season but yes but you look at the Women's World Cup you know they changed the, the penalty policy in terms of you're able to come off your line you know so it can be done I don't see any reason why they've got to wait till July I don't think that announcement made Fulham feel any better put no, it that way absolutely Here's uh, Dan Byrne playing it down the left-hand side for Brighton. You're listening to game day on Talk Sport 2. Nine minutes play. Brighton nil, Leicester nil. Brighton have given it away right on the edge of their own penalty area. Here is Tillemans. Plays it out to the left-hand side to his fellow Belgian, Castagna. Castagna cuts in on the right foot. One-two with Tillemans. Back towards Castagna. Really good defending uh, by Ben White. We've been, become accustomed to that. Hurdles the challenge of Castagna and confidently brings the ball away. He is a young man with a very, very bright future. Yeah, and they don't really have a natural lefty, do they, on this left-hand side, Leicester, so Castagna will always duck in field onto his favoured right foot. Here's Trossard, just padding the ball forward to Adam Lallana. Hasn't played much football since arriving on a free transfer from Liverpool at the start of the season. Here's Veltman now, playing it down the line for Gross. The idea was right, not quite the execution, and behind for a goal kick, but I think you look at the two managers both out on the edge of the two technical areas I think Graham Potter at the moment will be far the happier David Connolly absolutely and this is a similar performance as you know the Villa one that we've seen so far where they absolutely bossed the ball from the very very start you know Villa are chasing shadows and in the end we're relieved to come wide of a point Schmeichel with the ball at his feet inside the six yard box for Farner drops the shoulder trying to turn away from Mopo he's being a pest for Brighton and trying to force the error from Leicester in the end it goes out for a throw in for the visitors Leicester unbeaten in their last nine Premier League away games they've got the best away record in the entire division this season nine wins four draws and only one defeat away from the King Power it's that away form that 
they will be hoping holds firm for the rest of the season but here's a big chance for Brighton and it's been tucked away Adam Lallana gives Brighton the lead inside 10 minutes it's his first goal since October of 2019 it came from a Leicester City throw-in Brendan Rodgers will be absolutely furious but Adam Lallana is absolutely delighted for Brighton once again Brighton hunting high up the field he found a run in between the three central defenders and he's tucked that away in style Adam Lallana for his first Brighton goal to make it Brighton 1 Leicester City 0 well it's a huge goal for Brighton but also for Lallana personally I know he's had a lot of injury problems since he's come here and that's really hurt him but he finished that so so well sent Michael the wrong way they got to say Neil Mope did absolutely brilliantly he held the ball off shrugged off that sort of physical challenge that he had and then slipped it through the legs looked like say on and there's Lallana just ghosting in behind him looked one way finished it with the other lovely eyes finished and look that that'll really give him confidence you know he's one of those players Adam who, who thrives on confidence playing being fit and having an impact for his team and he hasn't had that at Brighton he really hasn't since he's come here but that is a huge goal yeah he could be a big big player for Graham Potter for the rest of the campaign Adam Lallana and as in midweek Leicester City on their travels behind very early on they came back to snatch a crucial point against Burnley at Turf Moor they're going to need all their powers of recovery once again here on Talk Sport 2 at the Amex Stadium Brighton 1 Leicester 0 and just rewards really for a really enterprising start from the Seagulls but I think what will infuriate Brendan Rodgers is that Leicester really there from their own throw in David Masters their own downfall yeah absolutely but you know when we were talking before the game and we were discussing you know the players that Brighton had in their midfield I, I wasn't buying it that it, Adam was going to play left wing you know doesn't matter what sort of TV say and all this you know because that's not the strength of Adam you don't bring Adam Lallana his football club to play left wing he's not a left winger you bring him to do the damage in the middle of the pitch and, and look he's linked it really well he's got his goal from being a little bit deeper than Neil Mopay and you've got to credit Potter for that because he's made a big call right he needed someone with a, that bit of quality to come in and, and deliver and Adam's got the goal so far yeah and it's been a long time since Adam Lallana's name appeared on a Premier League score sheet here is Sion Chu back into the centre circle and Fafana Leicester rocked here on the south coast Brighton 1 Leicester City nil. Fafana sprays the ball out to the right hand side it's over the head of Byrne and the chasing Ricardo the goal scored by Adam Lallana after a Leicester City era with only 10 minutes play Brendan Rodgers with a face like thunder down on the touchline as we welcome listeners from Talk Sport and that Lallana goal at the moment separating these two teams could be a big one for Brighton David Conley and their hopes of staying in the Premier League yeah they've started it really really well just bossed the ball Brighton looked really sharp and bright moved it forward got in between the lines and obviously Lallana just operating off the front him and Neil Mope combined ever so well there for that goal superstar from them just what Graham Potter would have ordered that's the story then 14 minutes played Lallana with a goal it is Brighton 1 Leicester 0 Dan Byrne heading away under pressure for Brighton once again and I guess the difference tonight David and we, we've been at games here when they've drawn nil nil they've dropped points they've dominated possession they've started brightly the difference tonight is they have a goal they have something tangible to show for their efforts absolutely and that'll give them confidence you know because as I said Wolves Villa those sort of performances we've been here and covered had a lot of the ball had nothing for it they have now nine of uh, Leicester's 15 wins this season have come on their travels at the moment their hopes of equaling a club record unbeaten away run in all competition under serious threat here courtesy of that goal from Lallana he's hassling and harrying deep in Leicester territory here Lallana so on you the Turkish defender and the right bandage on his left wrist plays it to Fafana in the centre of that back three well it's interesting how that's the third time now they try to hit the ball in behind Dan Byrne and, and every time he's got there first which you think right if you're going to try anyone over the top surely you'll probably aim over you know to, to Leicester's right hand side where they're a little bit smaller with Veltman and, and White 
Oh, lovely layoff again by Lalana. He looks in the mood tonight. Here's Pascal Gross accelerating down the right hand side. Lalana's continued his run into the centre. Picks it up inside the D. Left footed effort blocked by Tavares. He's absolutely bossing the game at the moment. Adam Lalana pulling all the strings for Brighton. On this occasion, Leicester do manage to smuggle it clear. They can't get out. Here's Basuma winning it back high up the field for the Seagulls. Out to Gross on this right hand side again. Drills the ball into the centre, looking for McAllister. Cleared away by Ndidi, and then hooked up towards the halfway line by Castagna, but Vardy can't make it stick. Castagna volleys it clear once more, but picked up by Lalana this time, then a little nonchalant flick with the outside of the right foot to find Veltman. I mean, on form, an injury free, he's a wonderful player to watch, Adam Lalana. Yeah. I had a couple of seasons with him at Southampton he's a great lad honestly he's you know football through and through works really hard at his game model pro and obviously got wonderful ability and I, I felt sorry for him a lot you know we come to games here and you'd, he'd be on the bench and obviously people saying he hasn't worked out and all that ability and you know title winner etc you come into Brighton to sort of put your stamp really when you come here on the south coast he's from the south coast lives on the south coast doesn't he you know Bournemouth or whatever and you know at times and yeah, he just really wanted it to happen for him but huge goal for him personally big cricket fan as well I think he was interviewed by Steve Harmison as part of our excellent award winning cricket coverage on TalkSport 2 earlier this week and the next one day international live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 from uh, Friday afternoon if you haven't got the TalkSport app download it very easy to scroll between TalkSport and TalkSport 2 to catch all of the shows and action and podcasts as well as Leicester have the ball on the halfway line with Tavares 17 minutes gone Alex Crook and David Conley here at the Amex for Brighton 1 Leicester 0 and that scoreline is a more than fair reflection on what we've seen so far Leicester haven't started yet here is Sayunchu trying to instill some urgency in his team forward it goes to Vardy with his back to goal plays it into Ndidi and now it's out to the right-hand side and Amato. Into Tillemans. Neat little layoff looking for Ryan Accio. Scooped away by Lewis Dunk, the Brighton captain. Everybody in blue back behind the ball. Yeah, it was the right idea though, wasn't it, from Leicester? Because obviously when they get the ball wide, they've got a, a Brighton wall. You know, two units of four. And then obviously, you know, Mope and Alana in front of that. So you, you swing a ball in the box there and it's the land of the Giants. So you've got to try and be clever and work it in and, and pick and choose your moments to find a Tielemans defeat or a little clever layoff chip forward by Fafana good run into the penalty area by Ricardo Sanchez came out bravely Ricardo's gone down just on the edge of the six yard box and Sanchez now has also dropped to his knees it was really brave goalkeeping Ricardo looks like he'll be okay Sanchez might require some treatment it was the right ball from Fafana and but for Sanchez reacting so quickly Brighton could have had a problem yeah it's a brilliant diagonal actually and Pereira just just ghosted in behind Dan Burnley just switched off ever so slightly that was all it needed and really good goalkeeping from some Sanchez but he did he did actually clatter into Pereira well VAR we will of course be uh, checking the contact Stuart Atwell in charge of the uh, video technology at Stockley Park looks like he's happy and play has restarted Sanchez back to his feet having received momentary treatment and he's back now on the halfway line with Leicester in possession for Farner deepest of the Foxes outfield players plays it into the feet of Kasper Schmeichel nine Premier League clean sheets this season for the Denmark international but has already had to pick the ball out of his net tonight Adam Lallana with a goal in the 10th minute Brighton leading 1-0 here is Ben White for the Seagulls back inside their own half they just slowed the game down to a walking pace Dan Byrne side foots it forward to McAllister well this is where look they've got the overload in the middle of the park you know they're outnumbered we spoke at the start about it you know Tielemans indeed he got an awful lot of granite cover Gross in there Lalana's in there Trossard is in there McAllister's in there and when they're in possession Lalana's almost playing as a second striker up yeah. alongside Neil Mope he's got that freedom isn't he given license you know you're, you're just playing in behind Mope but obviously if he drops in you can go and be a second striker and run in behind you're listening to Brighton against Leicester on TalkSport 2 with Now TV 
Don't forget you can watch Brighton against Leicester live right now with a Sky Sports Day Pass for just £9.99. Search Now TV. Brighton almost uh, catching Brighton in possession inside their own uh, penalty area once again, catching Leicester, I should say. Here is uh, Fafana. They haven't looked particularly comfortable, David, playing the ball out from the back tonight, Leicester. No, look, it's a, it's a new back unit, isn't it? Just put together as they, you know, have done a few times this season, Leicester, with, you know, with injuries, etc. So, taking a little while to gel, that's for sure. It's going to be a fascinating battle, isn't it, for the uh, top four. Manchester City, I think we can say, will be in the Champions League next season with a fair degree of certainty. But even Manchester United in second, with their recent run of form, not looking comfortable. Leicester with the injuries, fears they might miss out as well. Chelsea going great guns under Thomas Tuchel. Everton lurking. Liverpool, of course, what a story of the champions that don't make it into the Champions League next season. It's going to be really intriguing. Tottenham as well suddenly have found a bit of form under Jose Mourinho. Well, say on to you there, I mean, he's left side centre half. He's just played the most casual ball with his left peg. A huge raking diagonal. He's got such a limited chance of coming off straight out of play. And Brendan Rodgers just turns around and they've got to do better. Veltman finding the liner on the edge of the area again. Lovely back heel into Mopay. The flag has gone up against Neil Mopay. I mean, the skill and the vision from Adam Lallana under pressure from that Leicester back line. It didn't look under pressure. It looked like he had all the time in the world. And he's got a smile on his face. He's enjoying himself, David. Yeah, yeah. He's just operating off the front. Little pocket. Takes it in. Gathers it in. He knows that Mopay's behind him. Tries a little back heel towards Mopay. It comes off, but Mopay doesn't actually realise that he's got a Marty behind him. It was just marginally offside. But again, yeah, that brilliance of Lallana. His vision, obviously, eyes in the back of his head at times. Tillemans has been clobbered there by Yves Basuma, never one to shirk away from a challenge, the Malian, and it's a free kick for Leicester, five yards inside their own half, inside the centre circle, we've reached the midway point of the first half here on game day on TalkSport 2, and it's Brighton 1, Leicester 0, and we've got a busy midweek coming up, lots of European action Tuesday night, 8 o'clock in the uh, Champions League, Juventus taking on Porto live here on TalkSport 2 on Wednesday, We've got Paris Saint-Germain against Barcelona. Can Barcelona stage a miracle recovery? It's also live on Talks for Turn on Thursday. Uh, three games for the Europa League involving British clubs. Manchester United against AC Milan is live on Talk Sport at 5-6. to six. At the same time, here on 2, we've got Slavia Prague against Rangers. And then Olympiakos against Arsenal is an 8 o'clock kickoff. Of course, it was Olympiakos who knocked Arsenal out of the Europa League last season. That's on Talk Sport 2 on Thursday night. Well, if I was Brighton, I'd be saying, right, every time Leicester get the ball at back, let's close for far off. Let's try and keep it going down Soyuncu's side. You know, he's obviously not a natural lefty. Castagna's not a natural lefty. And stop it going down the right. Milana has uh, played it forward to McAllister. Here is Trossard on the left-hand side, trying to bamboozle Ricardo. Crosses deep into the area. Mope missed the header. Veltman nods it back down inside the box. Milana tries to keep it alive. He's in an offside position. Again, they almost looked outnumbered there, Leicester, by the blue shirt. Swarming all over that Fox's penalty area. It's a brilliant ball here from Trossard. Gets to the byline, dinks a fantastic cross up to the back post. And I guess if Mopé was a little bit taller, maybe, stretching for it, just was over his head slightly, try to keep it alive in the end of the line, just fractionally offside. I'll tell you what, I'm missing our old mate Bruno tonight. Normally the uh, former Brighton defender, very much part of the backroom staff, uh, takes his seat just to our left-hand side. We can usually hear him bellowing at the players I think he's taking a slightly lower vantage point this evening I think that's him underneath a, a bobble hat four rows from the front of the stand at the moment he will be a very happy Brighton coach the Seagulls leading by a goal to nil and uh, at the moment Leicester haven't really threatened to get back in the game here's Iannaccio though running at the Brighton back line into Vardy really good defending by Ben White just managed to shoulder barge Vardy away from goal and the pass from Ionetcho therefore trickled through to Sanchez the goalkeeper. Yeah he's unlucky first time we've really seen Leicester in between the lines here's Ian Atcho in that little pocket spots the diagonal run of Vardy but Ben White matches him stride for stride he's quick isn't he Ben White he able to keep pace with Vardy what a fantastic season Ben White on loan at Leeds in the championship helped them to end their 16 year XR from the Premier League Leeds are actually keen to sign him permanently I think Liverpool were sniffing around as well in the summer but he signed a new contract and Brighton very relieved to keep him whether that resolve will be tested in the summer I think we'll 
certainly be a topic of debate. So too, E. Basuma in midfield, who has his suitors right at the top end of the Premier League. And Lewis Dunk was linked with Chelsea in the summer as well. The Seagulls captain. Here is Iannaccio in the orange footwear, plays it back to Sayuncu, just on the left corner of the penalty area. Brighton leading by a goal to nil. Adam Alana in the tenth minute. His first for the club. Here is Tillemans. Well, every time they look, this is about the fourth or fifth pass that's come out this left-hand side and everything's gone back infield. They don't have a natural left footer out here. No Thomas, obviously, in the team. Yeah, looks a bit imbalanced for Brendan Rodgers' side. Lewis Dunk has uh, gone down under a challenge from Vardy, but it was uh, no foul play, according to the referee. Vardy to Iannaccio, eight yards outside the penalty area. Basuma closes him down quickly, but here's Ndidi. Leicester just trying to pick their way through here. And they've gone all the way back to Sionchu. I think Brendan Rodgers is a bit frustrated that they didn't make more of that. Still in possession with Amato. Midway inside the Brighton half. Plays it out to the right and Ricardo. Ricardo with a chance to run at Dan Byrne. Gets into the penalty. A good defending by Byrne. Had to time that challenge to perfection. And just pokes the ball behind for a corner for Leicester, their second of the evening. Yeah, they're much more threatening down that right-hand side with Pereira. You can just see Trossard here, he's trying to show the ball infield, he doesn't really want it going out to Pereira. Dan Byrne gets tight, but he's got those long legs, doesn't he? Those long levers, just did enough. Take it off the top, Pereira, but it is a corner. I'm sure he will take from the right-hand side in front of a big blue canvas of the Brighton Seagulls badge. Straight into the arms of Sanchez. That was a really disappointing delivery, and Brighton can attack at pace here. It's four against three. Lalana leading the charge. Mopé to his left. So too Trossard. Couldn't quite help it out to the Belgian, but Leicester struggling again to clear their lines. In the end, Ndidi with Lalana on, on the ground manages to do so. And a free kick now for a foul by Veltman on Tavares, right in the centre of the Leicester half. Well, one thing, if you are struggling, you know, set pieces, you can see a lot of goals, it's great if you come, you know, goalkeeper can come and claim that really cleanly and set you on the attack. Maybe Adam Milano might have done a little bit better with that final pass, trying to pick out Mopé. But, again, it's just encouraging, isn't it? More signs of a really good performance, nice and bright, everything they're doing at this moment in time, Brighton. Just the one home victory so far this season for Brighton. Only one in their last 17 matches, going back to last season in the first game of project restart when they beat arsenal here to really cement their status in the premier league long ball forward from leicester looking for vardy who salutes the effort but sanchez out sharply on the edge of the 18 yard box to collect that well if you contrast how leicester are playing this back three compared to brighton if you look at say when brighton have the three who's the one that bombs forward it's dan burn you know because they're, they're well versed in what they're doing he goes and and makes that extra player going forward but if you look at leicester no one really knows what to do on the outside of those centre-backs, you know, Sayonchu doesn't venture forward, Amati doesn't really venture forward, in the end, they end up with those three always behind the ball, and that's because it's not their real natural system, they're still trying to work out the best way to play it, and again, Fafana driving the ball, tries to play it out to the left, it goes out of play, so it's just, it's just not quite clicking for them. It's the uh, voice of David Conley, the former Leicester City striker here on TalkSport 2, and with the score at 1-0 to Brighton, let's get the latest odds with 888 Sport, where you can get Brighton to win at 1.4. The draw is 4.0. A Leicester City victory, if you fancy the Foxes for a comeback, 8.25. That's where the latest odds from 888 Sport, 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Be gambleaware.org. Really pleasing opening 29 minutes for the home team here at the Amex. Leicester's. European jitters at the moment will continue. Well, that defeat against Arsenal live on Talk Sport last Sunday morning. Dropping two more points at Burnley in midweek and behind here. Oh, just a misplaced pass there from McAllister and I think Potter knows a better one there. They're in again, Brighton. I mean, they've got so many technicians in the middle of the park, you know, so comfortable in possession. I think if they get a second, Leicester could be in big trouble. Iannaccio could be in trouble here because there's been an off-the-ball incident involving Alexis McAllister. He's gone down holding his face. I don't think it was deliberate, more of a coming together. We're watching a replay now on the monitor. He did leave with the right arm. Kalecci, Iannaccio. David Conley, your views on this? 
Well, I mean, it just seems to catch McAllister with his elbow. I don't think there's too much in that. I mean, obviously, McAllister's down. That, that one does probably hurt, but I don't think it was deliberate. Once again, we welcome listeners from Talk Sport. Brighton won Leicester nil. Seagull still in front, courtesy of that early goal from Adam Alana. We've got a stoppage in play here because Alexis McAllister, who've been caught in the face unintentionally by Ianacho, is down. Receiving treatment gives both managers the chance to administer one or two instructions Brendan Rogers, David Conley to our right they're reanimated what will he be saying well I don't know he might, he might be changing shape we'll have to wait and see because this three at the back I don't think it's worked for him so far obviously they've got no natural left footer out here on the left anyway so on choose left side centre half Castagna's playing left wing back but they've never really got out on the left they look very uncomfortable in this three they're not like, say, an Arsenal who have a team here and they can change from a, a three to a four. He can drop back in there. They're obviously just getting used to how they're playing here. Whereas Brighton have got a similar sort of shape, but they've played it really, really well. And what they have, Brighton, in the middle of the park, they've got four, like, real technicians. You know, McAllister, Lalana, Gross, Pesuma's good on the ball, Trossard. So they're all really, really comfortable receiving in, in sort of tight areas. And they've played really well, Brighton. Here's Gross down the right-hand side. He's uh, very much been part of an impressive attacking display so far but he's given it away to Vardy and then he dragged Vardy to the floor will be a Leicester free kick on halfway and with 13 and a bit minutes to go until half time it's still Brighton 1 Leicester 0 is, is it the right time to, to be chopping and changing formations I know it's by necessity because of the injuries but the stakes for Leicester are so high I mean it was a real gut wrencher wasn't it when they lost to Manchester United on the last day of last season and missed out on a Champions League place having been part of the top four furniture for much of the campaign well he's got the players to play the four isn't he in terms of say on and Fafana he put Pereira right back to me and, and Castagna left back that's your natural back four is he over complicating it a bit well he has played a three previously you know so it, it just it, look, it hasn't worked and do you know why it doesn't work is because we've seen Brighton we've had the benefit of seeing Brighton so often that they do dominate the ball and they're better I think when you come up against a side that plays a certain shape and they do it better than you, then you're in a bit of trouble. I think Leicester fans forgave them last season for, for not finishing in the Champions League places. They, they knew that they were probably overachieving. I think this season they feel that the squad is deeper. They, they have a better chance of, of Champions League football. It's a bit like if you you got one of those locks when you leave your front door and uh, it, it locks itself if you if you lock yourself out your house once it's clumsy if you do it twice it's unforgivable it's if Leicester were to fall out the top four again I think there would be different ramifications for Brendan Rodgers different questions to be answered here's Mopay down the right hand side crossing into the area clear by Pafana hit the arm of Mopay it's a free kick for Leicester in their left back position I mean a little handball here for Mopay but the ease that which he skipped past Sayonchu would be a little bit of a concern. I mean, I looked at Sayonchu against Slavia Prague, and you know, for the first goal, he could have got out a little bit slow. And obviously, he's been in and out of the team as well. Injury, he's not quite maybe at his normal levels either. Well, Brighton have lost their last two games in the Premier League, not lost three in a row since November of 2019. They're actually on a pretty good run before those two defeats, a, a club record run in terms of games in the top flight, unbeaten. Ryan Potter never one to change his mood actually he's pretty much the same in defeat as he is in victory certainly hasn't shown any sign of panic in the build up to this game and his team aren't playing like a side who are fearing for their Premier League futures either very confident performance so far helped by the early goal Brighton leading 1-0 here on game day on TalkSport 2 as Jamie Vardy, very quiet so far, plays it into the feet of Castagna. Well, this is where they miss Johnny Evans, because, you know, if Johnny was playing left side, centre-back, he's, although he's right foot, his left foot is just as good as his right, you know, he can go both ways, switch the play, play that big raking diagonal, we've seen Sean do it once, and obviously kick it straight off the park. It's been a relatively comfortable night so far, hasn't it, for the Brighton defence? Kept Leicester very much at arm's length, he is indeed it, really fascinating central midfield battle between him and E. Basuma. at the moment I would say Basuma is probably edging it Schmeichel out to the right hand side for Leicester Ricardo can't keep it in play it's going to be a throw in for Brighton Graham Potter clapping his hands maybe to keep warm but I think also to cajole his side to keep going for the final 10 minutes of this first half 
Well, that's because they, they got a press on really well. Just locked Leicester in down this left side. Aren't you turned out using his right foot back to his goalkeeper? They kept the press on back to Schmeichel and again kept the press on, kicked it out of play. So, you know, just, just again, just really good play from Brighton as a team. And here's Veltman trying to knock it into the penalty area, looking for McAllister. Runs all the way through to Kasper Schmeichel. One of the few survivors now from the Leicester team that stunned the sporting world by winning the Premier League back in 2015, really changing the landscape of the club. Here is Sayunchu, five yards inside the Leicester half, forward to Iannaccio coming very deep. And uh, might get Vardy over the top here. Lays it up for Tavares, oh brilliant strike, even better save by Sanchez. A superb Leicester City move, Tavares let fly with a volley. It was nestling in that bottom corner, but Sanchez flung himself down low to his left-hand side and turned it behind for a corner. What a super save this is from Sanchez. I mean, he's at full stretch. Brilliant, terrific strike from Tavares. He's about 20 yards out. He arrows that. It's destined for that corner, but at full stretch, Sanchez, what a save. Leicester's best chance so far. Here's Tillemans with a corner. Sionchu's header just bounces away from Jamie Vardy and bounces behind. But there's uh, an illustration, if one was needed for Graham Potter in front of us, a 1-0 lead is a slender one. Only takes a moment of magic. That would have been a magical way to open his Leicester City account for the 19-year-old Tavares. It's a fantastic save from Robert Sanchez. Needed all of his 6-foot, six 6-inch six frame there to get down and cover the goal. Yeah, and a strong wrist as well. You're right. I mean, maybe if that was a smaller keeper, they wouldn't have got there. And he would have seen that late as well, because there's quite a few Brighton bodies in the way. Lovely ball over the top, wasn't it, for me and Acho, just to pick out Vardy. Nice little deft header down. And there's Tavares just operating off the front. His first real involvement, really, in the game. Could have been a goal. Link layoff from Mope inside the centre circle. McAllister out to the left and Trossard. Trossard tries to slide it forward to Mope. One back, but only for a second or two by Ricardo. Trossard makes sure that Brighton keep the ball. He's giving it away again to Ndidi. And then McAllister just dragging Ricardo to the ground. He quickly exits the scene to avoid a yellow card and Leicester have a free kick just inside their own half. This is a really intriguing battle, David, between these two. Yeah, it is. I mean, Graham Potter a couple of times just turned away, really frustrated because, you know, just little details. There was a pass there that went out wide to Trossard and it was slightly behind him, so Trossard had to check his run and then it just slowed the attack down and, and obviously he turned away knowing that those little details do slow you down. Better pass out wide and suddenly Brighton are away. The ball from... Castagna into Tavares who is just growing in influence he's been fouled there by Eve Basuma and Leicester with a chance to summon forward from the back the likes of Sion Chu and Fafana and indeed Amati as well only Castagna and Ricardo will be left back behind the ball here and Yuri Tillemans such a magician from these set pieces he's going to play this into the Brighton penalty area away to our left it's going to be a right footed ball that hangs in the air and I mean giving him the big build up it is over hit and bounces behind for a goal kick yeah it was over here I mean just going back to Tavares obviously his first start isn't it you know youngster they've got high hopes for and maybe that that strike will just give him that little bit of confidence maybe to get in the game a bit more he's been mentioned in dispatches with Barcelona I think his contract at, at Leicester is coming to an end in the summer well I just wonder he's one of those if you remember Scotty Parker where he gave his he gave the debut to, to Harvey Elliott you know, and then you think, OK, Harvey, go on in, stay at the club, and then he, he departs for Liverpool. What Brendan's hoping for is obviously not the same here. G giving Tavares his head in the Premier League and obviously gets repaid maybe by remaining at the club. Here's Mope, just had his heels clipped by Fafana. It's going to be a Brighton ball down by the right corner flag. You're listening to Brighton against Leicester on TalkSport 2 with WeBuyAnyCar.com. Don't part exchange, get money off your next car. Go to WeBuyAnyCar.com. Pascal Gross is uh, lining up to take this free kick for Brighton, no more than a yard and a half in from the right touch line. Ten yard try, the corner flag. Lewis Dunk and Big Dan Byrne waiting in the centre among a plethora of blue shirts to attack this ball. Can he do better than Tillemans at the other end, Gross? Right footed, near post, flicked across the face of goal and just wide. So Lallana, I think, who got on the end of that on the corner of the six yard box and glanced it across the face of goal Ben White was there as well it was Lalana, and he's hit the post yeah he just nipped in front of Vardy there I think Gross maybe with the delivery is a little bit under hit but 
Adam Lalana was on the move, got their first little glancing header, took a little bounce on the way into that far corner. Schmeichel had a dive at it, couldn't reach it, came off the outside of the post, it looked like it just evaded Ben White. And then it was clear behind frantically for a Brighton corner. And I think Adam Lalana has scored too many headed goals in his career. It's his goal that divides these two teams and the former England international, the former Premier League winner, so close to a second. They have a corner. And it's going to be played in from the left-hand side this time. Grosch again to the near post. This time with Ben White climbing high, as nods it behind and Schmeichel in a hurry with only five minutes to play until half-time to get Leicester on the restart here. Live on game day on TalkSport 2. Already today we brought you commentary live and exclusive over on TalkSport of Burnley 1, Arsenal 1. That was followed at 5.30 by another draw. No goals in that one. As uh, Aston Villa played out a nil-nil draw with Wolves. And tomorrow a huge game at the bottom of the table. Live and exclusive on TalkSport. Midday kickoff as West Bromwich Albion take on Newcastle. I think both of those teams, both sets of supporters, were hoping that Leicester would win this game tonight and keep Brighton within reach. At the moment, that isn't going to happen. And you wonder, is this going to be a significant evening for Brighton in terms of securing Premier League football for another season? One of a clutch of teams looking anxiously over their shoulder, particularly in the direction of Fulham. Although Southampton got a big win today, 2-0 at Sheffield United. Sheffield United all but down now, and Southampton, we have to say, looking fairly secure, as they should have been. They were top of the table in November, but were on a wretched run ahead of that trip to Bramall Lane. Free kick for Leicester here, midway inside the Brighton half. Foul on Ian Acho by... McAllister, he doesn't mind a tackle, David, does he, the Argentine? He's no. got that bit of devil in him. Yeah, he does, yeah, you're right. And this time, though, Tuleman's elected not really to put it in the box. They're trying to work it, work their way into the box, which has proven pretty hard to do. They've gotten a couple of times with a longer pass, but haven't really sort of cut Brighton open yet. So I shoot to Tillemans, two yards inside the... Brighton half, here is uh, Fafana, the South African skips away from Mope, plays it forward to Tavares, Dan Burn sticks out one of those telescopic legs and pokes it away for Brighton and will look to counter here with two and a half minutes remaining in the first half, Pascal Gross confronted by Tillemans, so checks back into the centre circle and Burn with a heavy touch has given it away, really important intervention from Basuma to get there ahead of Ian Acho and plays it all the way back to Sanchez the Brighton goalkeeper Dunk pokes it forward out to that left hand side and Burn again plenty of blue shirts to aim at for Dan Burn stopped in his tracks momentarily by Ndidi here's Trossar into Lalana first time ball again Mope one on one with the goalkeeper lifted over Schmeichel into the net the offside flag is up VAR will check this one Adam Lalana with a sublime through ball but did Mope go just a fraction early? David Connolly. Well, this is a terrific touch. I think it is just marginally offside, but comes into the line. A square ball in the air. Little left foot, volley ball round the corner. Right into the path of Mope. Cool as a cucumber. Sends Michael the wrong way again. Lovely finish. But just offside by the looks of it. Yeah, VAR have uh, taken very little time to rubber stamp that decision. Pretty easy one for the assistant on this near side. But... Once again, a sign that Brighton are posing a real threat to this Leicester City defence every time they come forward. And Lalana is having, arguably, his best game in a Brighton shirt. Here's Ben White down the right-hand side. Gross ahead of him. White crosses into the area. Scoops away off the head of Sonju. And brought down neatly by Ndidi. Skips away from White. Adam Lalana doing his defensive duty now. White sliding in and, and Lalana pokes it down the right touch line to Pascal Gross cuts neatly inside of Tillemans Mopo back to Yves Basuma Brighton ending the half as they started it on the front foot Lewis Dunk with a raking ball diagonally out to this right hand side looking for Gross headed clear by Castagna and the Seagulls have a throw midway inside Leicester territory well I think Brighton hopefully now might have the number 10 that they've been searching for for a long time as long as obviously the Lama stays fit because if you're nil Mopo you just think wow this is a striker's dream on the end of sort of those little through balls, clever passes like that. When I spoke to him uh, soon after he signed Lana, I asked him about England. He said he hadn't closed the door on that, but I think there's uh, quite a few number 10s ahead of him now in the queue. 
replacing Gareth Southgate's plans. I guess a disappointing thing, certainly for Neil Mope, is he, he just didn't ensure he stayed on side because he would always have the pace to get in behind like that, you know, and really he's got to take his cue off the player he can see. Just a one added minute at the end of the first half here at the Amex. You're listening to game day on Talk Sport 2, Alex Cook and David Conley in the commentary box. It's Brighton 1, Leicester 0. And we are now just about into that one added minute. Ball played out by Fafana to the right hand side. That really sums up a very sloppy first half performance from Leicester looking for Ricardo, but far too much weight on the ball it's out for a throw the other reason why I didn't buy that Lallana was going to start on the left hand side is that's sort of Leicester's strength in terms of Pereira bombing up and down and, and that's where you need Trossard he's the one who's got the, the legs and Adam will put himself about but yeah, he doesn't have that burst of pace does he that maybe or the work rate of some of the other players who work hard but I think out on that left hand side it was a smart call to put Trossard yeah in the moment a very astute tactical decision from Graham Potter winning that particular battle with Brendan Rodgers, two former Swansea managers of course, Swansea with a stoppage time winner in the championship this afternoon to move up to third in the table and the half time whistle has blown here at the Amex, a big grin across the face of Adam Lallana, it's the former England man whose goal separates these two sides, Leicester being caught in possession from their own throw in and Brighton ruthlessly exposing their defensive weaknesses, Lallana with a goal on 10 minutes could have had a second as well a header against the outside of the post Leicester well the closest they came to scoring a brilliant half volley from Sidney Tavares the 19 year old expertly clawed behind by Robert Sanchez but at the moment the Fox is floundering once again in the Premier League half time at the Amex Brighton 1 Leicester 0 thank you Will we are fully recharged and uh, a bit warmer after our half time Bob rule much needed as the temperature continues to plummet here at the Amex Stadium but Brighton certainly warming the hearts of their supporters with a superb first half display they lead by a goal to nil they have though dropped 14 points from winning positions this season so I guess Graham Potter at half time in his team talk will have been reiterating to his players the job is only half done we are back off and underway Brighton attacking the goal away to our left in this second half in their blue shirts white shorts and blue socks Leicester City all in purple attacking the traditional away end of the ground away to our right hand side no change in personnel at this stage so Brighton with Sanchez in goal Veltman White Duncan Byrne in defence Gross and Basuma deepest in midfield with McAllister Lalana and Trossard and behind Neil Mope up front for Leicester Schmeichel in goal Amate Fafana and Sionchu in a back three Ricardo Tillemans and Didi Tavares and Castagna make up midfield and Ian Acho partnered with Jamie Vardy up front Jamie Vardy starved of service so far looking to continue his record of goals here at the Amex scored on each of his last three appearances at this ground and it's Leicester in possession with Ndidi good ball over the top trying to seek out Ricardo who is quick but not that quick the ball is out David Conley for a goal kick yeah I just wonder though I mean I'm sure Brendan Rodgers will think why didn't we cross the ball they got in and around the box Castagna checked out worked it back eventually they're almost at their halfway line before Ndidi tries pretty ambitious diagonal so you know could have actually got the ball in they got two strikers there just deliver it in the box but I guess they probably look up Castagna might look up and he'll see why he'll see he'll see Burn he'll see Duncan he'll think you know land of the Giants I'll, I'll just retain it you've played two minutes in the second half you're listening to game day on Talk Sport 2 with Alex Crook and David Conley the former Ireland and Leicester striker amongst others and Brighton lead 1-0 Leicester dominating possession early in this second half you know he's done a really good job Alex and I know you like him he's he Pesuma isn't he super player yeah I mean I know I think I remember you saying he was linked with possible Liverpool or, or, or whatever but just looking at him today he's got that role hang on Ryan Acho finding Vardy down the left hand side crosses in towards Tavares and Lewis Dunk there sticking out the right leg and diverting it into the arms of the goalkeeper Sanchez I think he took a whack in the face there from Tavares who was sliding in at the near post he's made of strong stuff though Lewis Dunk he'll be okay Jamie Vardy peeling over to that left hand side it was a clever run from the former England forward low ball into the area and really vital interception by Lewis Dunk 
Yeah, it's one of the only times I've really got the ball into the front without Ipasuma being there. Because what he's done really good, he's just screened that pass into the front, whether it's, you know, Ian Atro or, or Vardy. He's actually doing a job and a half because he's getting half an eye on, on Tielemans, but half an eye as well on the ball into the front. And uh, he's screened ever so well, picked up second ball, he's got his head in first, put his foot in. That was the only time, really, that he wasn't in and around Ian Atro. Long pumped up field by Sanchez, the... Brighton goalkeeper brought down by Trossard just on the edge of the Leicester area. Marte managed to smuggle it back to Schmeichel who clears it up in the Sussex sky. Nodded down by Ricardo. Dan Burner to keep the pressure on. Here's Alana. Good ball over the top. He's found Trossard or McAllister it was who crosses. And it was against that Amate and then the last touch ricocheting off the knee of Alexis McAllister and out for a goal kick for Leicester. No winning seven Premier League meetings against Leicester for Brighton. They are 42 minutes or so away from ending that run. And it will be a crucial step towards Premier League safety and another big blow for Leicester in terms of their top four hopes. Still plenty of football to be played here on game day on TalkSport 2. Fafana with the socks rolled down to the ankles. Plays it forward to Ricardo in golden footwear. Dispossessed though by McAllister. Probably seen that facet to his game tonight. The tenacity and the dogged defending more than his visionary forward play. McAllister, he's done a job for the team, that's for sure. And Brighton have come out on top of the midfield battle thus far here is Soyuncu for Leicester 10 yards inside his own half of the field away to our left infield to Wilfred Ndidi and here is Fafana again the French under, tw under 21 international who's already made himself a fan's favourite of the King Power following a big money move from St Etienne in the summer Ricardo with a low ball forward cleared by Basuma and then swept away upfield by Dan Byrne Fafana out jumping the Lana but Brighton still win it back with McAllister. It's a good ball forward to Mopa. I think it may have been offside actually. The flag stayed down. One back by Amate. And he plays it back to Kasper Schmeichel. Well, it was a lovely little death leg, which probably a lot of people wouldn't really notice. But the ball just came into Lallana. He just allowed it to drop off his thigh into the path of McAllister. Terrific little layoff. So clever. And he started the second half pretty well. Second good little pass. He's put through Lalana, so that's good, because it's always a question. When you haven't played a lot of football, you go in knackered at half-time. What are you like coming out in the second half? And he's, he's still come out pretty sharp. Yes, so, aren't you? Looking sharp for Leicester. Plays it down to the left-hand side in Castagna. One back by Joel Veltman. He's gone quietly about his business. The right back for Brighton. It's going to be a throw in here for the Seagulls inside their own half. We don't hear it because we've got headsets on, but producer Ollie was pointing out to me David Conley just how vocal Adam Alana was in that first yeah. half constantly talking to his teammates I think when Graham Potter signed him it was a it was as much for his leadership and, and character skills having let the likes of Glenn Murray and Shane Duffy to big characters in the dressing room move on that was certainly an attractive part of the package yeah you're right although if you remember as well the last time we're here in the program I think it might have had Trossard talking about Alana saying exactly that but my point was, Adam wouldn't want, wouldn't want to be referred to as someone who's just good in and around, offers good advice, because that'll hurt his pride. He want to be there considered because he's still a top player. You know, he's put on a top performance here. It's one thing being, you know, being a cheerleader, you know, but he's better. He's led by example tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You, you just wonder how many minutes he will have on his legs. It's a very high intensity game that, that Brighton play on the Graham Potter. I'd imagine when they get to the hour mark with his one 0 lead still intact. If that is the case, then maybe they might consider taking off Lalana and freshening it up. I don't think he'll want to come off, that's for sure. Here is uh, Eve Basuma. Those are the big decisions that Graham Potter and Brendan Rodgers will, will have to make in this second, second half. But you have to say, looking at the two benches, probably more options for Brighton than for Leicester, who have been, of course, heavily hit by injury in recent weeks. And uh, the, the lack of depth on their bench really illustrates that this evening. Here is Ian Acho though, good ball through to him, he's got the wrong side of Lewis Duncan, he slammed it left footed into the side netting, that's the ball they've been looking for all night Leicester, and Ian Acho looks glumly up to the skies, he knows that he should have done better. Yeah, it's actually Brighton with a poor pass actually going forward, and terrific ball here from Castagna, I think it is, just into Ian Acho, down the left hand side channel, you think, go on, you've got to go low, go across goal, he doesn't, smashes it near post and just comes off the side netting. Leicester looking to cement themselves in the top four and 
secure qualification for next season's Champions League. We've got Champions League football for you on Tuesday night on Talk Sport 2. 8 o'clock kickoff Juventus against Porto. Two former winners of the European Cup on Wednesday. Paris Saint Germain take on Barcelona. That's also an 8 o'clock kickoff here on Talk Sport 2. And then on Thursday, the Europa League winging back into action. Manchester United, AC Milan, 5.55 on Talk Sport. At the same time here on 2, Slavia Prague take on Rangers. That's followed at 8 o'clock on 2 by Olympiakos against Arsenal. A fixture that will bring back bad memories for Arsenal fans from last season. 1-0 Brighton lead here. And it's a throw-in that will be taken by Dan Byrne. Level with the Leicester penalty area. And launch this into that 18-yard box. Go short for Trossar. Out muscled by Ricardo, And then a foul by Trossar in trying to win it back. And will be a free kick for Leicester right on the corner of their penalty area. Relatively quiet night for Michael Oliver so far, having given 15 penalties this season in the Premier League, more than any other referee. There's been plenty of uh, VAR controversy already on game day. Arsenal denied what looked a clear penalty in that 1-1 draw against Burnley. Eric Peters also sent off at one stage for a handball video assistant referee in the end deciding correctly that the ball was off his shoulder and he was given a reprieve earlier tonight on Talk Sport it finished Aston Villa nil Wolves nil a big Midlands clash we're watching another Midlands side tonight Leicester struggling at the moment trailing by a goal to nil with 10 minutes gone in the second half not quite the uh, high intensity football from Brighton in the early exchanges of this half that we saw in the first but looking relatively solid still defensively as Mopay glances the ball with a header out to Trossard on this left hand side he's got Ndidi to get away from he skips past Ndidi to the byline and then cuts back on his right foot plays it into McAllister neat layoff to Lalana gets it back McAllister cross blocked away and then Dan Byrne with a deep ball towards the far post. Clutch from the air by Kasper Schmeichel. And bowls it out quickly to Iannaccio. And Leicester might break here. Only Vardy ahead of Iannaccio. He's got support now with Tillemans. And with Tavares. Tillemans can play out this right-hand side. Can he? Good tackle. Excellent challenge from Joel Veltman. Such a solid defender. Yeah. He's done really well, hasn't he? I mean, probably wouldn't have got a game if Lamp Lampy was fit. But that's why he signed him Potter you know won the title same as Lalana, obviously Ajax in Holland so two title winners you brought into the dressing room and he's been solid as a rock he was part of that Ajax side that went deep into the Champions League as well a couple of seasons ago losing out famously in Amsterdam to Tottenham I think he played in the Europa League final against Manchester United as well so they're experienced player the Dutch international as Sarancu brings it forward once again for Leicester I mean, a lot of possession, David, but not really in an area where they can hurt Brighton. Yeah, it's a, be it's a better start, though, compared to the first half. You know, they've come out much brighter. And here they come again with Iron Acho up against Burn And Dunku comes across and just stabs the ball out. Lewis Dunk in the end, where it's controlled by Brendan Rodgers. And it will be a throw-in for Leicester, taken by Amate. Into the feet of Iron Acho. And now Fafana will play it to his left and Sionchu. Everybody in purple for Leicester all the outfield players at the moment camped inside Brighton territory forward it goes to Tavares Tillemans dispossessed by a perfectly timed slide tackle from Eve Basuman and Lalana flicks it out the right hand side for Brighton here he is again Lalana rolls it into Mope he hasn't misplaced a pass all night Adam Lalana and it's a poor header back by Ricardo seized upon by Lalana I think he's going to be penalised for handball here as Trossard fires over the bar. Well, he's coming with his shoulder. I think it was a little bit lower down the arm than that, David. Yeah, I mean, he's worried of over stuff here from Adam Lalana. He's just rolling back the years. He looks so bright. Lovely little ball round the corner at Mopay. Then he spins again. He did raise his arm, so yeah, it was a handball. But just going back to that little footing from Basuma, it's another one. You know, he's done so well in front of that back four. He's got a bit of a problem in terms of Tielemans. He's given him an issue. Always on the outside of him. Does he pick him up? Does he pick up Vardy? At this moment in time, as I said, he's doing a sort of job and a half, doing both, doing it pretty well. Iannaccio trying to find Vardy inside the penalty area, brought down and then volleyed away by Ben White. Amate being put under pressure by Mope. The ball does go out for a Leicester throw, well inside their own half, away to our left. 
You're listening to Brighton against Leicester on Talk Sport 2 with Now TV. Don't forget you can watch Brighton against Leicester live right now with an LTV Sky Sports Pass for just £9.99. Search Now TV. Brighton, a little over half an hour away from only their second home Premier League win of the campaign. It's been a long time coming. That's what uh, Graham Potter will be thinking. As Leicester try and release Tavares. Has been given licence to, to get forward, hasn't he, Tavares, T towards the end of the first half and certainly in the opening exchanges in the second yeah he made a good deep run there in behind what they did quite well there in terms of Schmeichel just trying to drop the ball into Ian Acho. he flicked it on to Vardy who just sucked all the back unit out and that allowed the space for Tavares to run in behind but the pass was just over hit slightly Pascal Gross looking to uh, free up Veltman down the right hand side it's one back by Castagna but and a foul on Adam Lallana as he wrestled back possession I think he was one of those players, wasn't he, Lana? I think Brendan Rodgers really liked talk of him maybe going to Leicester as well. I was just about to say, he was the uh, the manager, wasn't he, when Lallana signed for Liverpool, Brendan yep. Rodgers. That's right, yeah. In the moment, it's his goal that's making it a miserable evening here on the south coast for the Leicester manager. 1-0 Brighton lead, that goal from Lallana coming as early as the 10th minute. Lallana also heading against the post as Brighton largely dictated the first half, just the one meaningful save from Robert Sanchez in the Seagulls goal it was a good save as well to deny Tavares from the edge of the penalty area and that goal from Lallana his first in 32 Premier League appearances since scoring for Liverpool against Manchester United back in October of 2019 it's been worth the wait if it turns out to be the winner well, for Brighton two big goals that was a big one wasn't it a huge one for Liverpool and they were 1-0 down weren't they yep. Lallana scoring in the final two or three minutes I remember it well here's Iannaccio over the top looking for Vardy Dunk chests it back to Sanchez who again was quickly off his line he's impressed me tonight Robert Sanchez he commands the penalty area maybe that was well, a criticism of Matty Ryan his predecessor yeah I guess there's that fine balance isn't there we've seen Alisson for example with that rush of blood with a high start position you know there is that it's always at risk, you know, a pass might not run through or you could get it wrong. But actually, his start position has been really good so far. Yes, it's been high and he has gathered quite a lot. Made that challenge against Pereira, which he had to. So it's worked so far. Indeed, he playing the ball out to the left-hand side into an area, really, rather than a teammate. Castagna does latch onto the pass, but he'll be forced back into his own half. And so, Unchu, so comfortable Sancho with the ball at his feet plays it forward to Castagna Tillemans trying to turn away from Ben White who's in a very advanced position in the end Tillemans under pressure just runs out of pitch on that far side and it's out for a Brighton throw 61 played Leicester still trailing by a goal to nil they have scored 46 goals in the Premier League this season Leicester only the two Manchester clubs have been more prolific I think Graham Potter will be feeling 1-0 probably isn't enough against this uh, calibre of opponent. It's a delicate balancing act now between pushing for the second and not leaving themselves too exposed to the back, but also not sitting too deep, David Connolly. Yeah, I mean, they're absorbing a, a lot of pressure. And you think, obviously, you know, with that, that front two, Ian Acho and Vardy, it's always a threat. And what is allowing the fact that Brighton are sitting so deep is allowing the Leicester defenders now to carry the ball high into their half. Amato the latest to do that. Midway inside Brighton territory. Just in from this right touchline. Forward to Iannaccio. Taken away from him by Lalana. And Lalana has spotted the run of Trossard. Tried to just pump the ball forward down the left-hand side. It was one back by Ndidi. And here's Iannaccio up against Sanchez. Lifted over the goalkeeper. And into the top corner. Kalechi Iannaccio equalises for Leicester City. It's his fourth goal in his last seven games. And on the day that Brendan Rodgers was talking him up as a potential successor for Jamie Vardy, uh, Iannaccio delivers. Brighton 1, Leicester 1. That's a terrific finish, but it's made by a superb pass from Yuri Tielemans. It's actually Adam Lallana gives this ball away. He tries an ambitious outside of the boot pass with his left peg. Loses possession, comes to Pereira, recycle it, get it on the inside. There's Tielemans, shifts it onto his right peg and plays a beautiful ball in behind Dunk. There's Ian Acho, caught cool as a cucumber. One touch to set himself. 
shifts it onto his left peg and just rolls it rifle I wouldn't say he rifles it it's a really cultured finish that he lifts it into the top corner terrific strike but the pass from Tielemans is even better well, welcome once again to listeners from Talk Sport Leicester City back on terms here at the Amex Kalecci Iannaccio with a deft finish into the corner slides on his knees points to the heavens in celebration Brighton must be sick of the sight of the former Manchester City man he got the late winner when these two met in the FA Cup of the King Power and it's his strike that cancels out Adam Lallana's opener the irony being Lallana giving the ball away in the build up to the goal but Leicester City much improved since half time and all of a sudden Graham Potter now is looking the more anxious David of the two managers well it's bitter pill I guess for them and we just spoke about obviously when you've got that front two they're such a threat but you need somebody to find them and it was that pass from, from Tielemans was absolutely terrific in mind dunk and he was so calm I actually got it onto his left peg and it's a really cultured finish you know with finesse in terms of how he struck it you know just lifted it away from Sanchez we may sort of make all oh, it in again yeah Vardy could be in here Sanchez comes sliding out of the feet of the Leicester striker completely different game now to the one that we witnessed in the first half 64 gone Brighton 1 Leicester 1 and Didi hunting high up the field but fouling McAllister according to the referee Michael Oliver and Didi protesting right in the face of the referee will be advised I think to walk away before he talks himself into trouble Tillemans having his say as well massive 25 minutes coming up now for these two David Connolly yeah I mean I mean Tiedemans you've got to remember he's having this I think it's probably his best ever season you know in terms of his goals he's got what's he got six I think it's the same as he got in his last couple of seasons he's, he's got seven he's had, now I think he's had assist as well you know and obviously passes like that that creativity is what they've been looking for just off the front they've got it Here's Iannaccio again, trying to get the ball out of his feet, just on the edge of the area, moves into the 18-yard box, plays it back to Ndidi, Castagna's got some space, left corner of the area, poor pass from Ndidi, and run clear by Ben White, I think Graham Potter's got some decisions to make now, because Brighton are firmly under the cosh, Castagna with a low ball into the area, looking for Iannaccio again, lurking on the edge of the six-yard box, straight into the gloves of Sanchez, as Brendan Rodgers wheels away in frustration down below us, I mean, you mentioned Tillemans there. It's the mark of a, a truly great player, isn't it? When the team aren't necessarily in top gear, as Leicester haven't been in recent weeks, he's really stepped up to the plate. He's been a driving force, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has. Just look at this little throw out there from Sanchez, just gifting possession away. But I mentioned about Basumi, he had a, he had a sort of problem in terms of Tielemans and blocking the ball into the front. It's a sort of job and a half, and which one do you close? Which one's the biggest threat? And obviously when Tielemans received just off the front, shifted it onto his right foot. And that's a Madison-esque pass, right? When you don't have a Madison or a Barnes, you need someone else to take up the slack and, and provide an assist. And Tielemans did it there. Terrific pass. Leicester dominating the ball now. Everybody in blue for Brighton back inside their own half. It's launched forward by Fafana. Tillemans was never going to get on the end of that one. Need to be Usain Bolt to keep that in play. He's out for a goal kick that Sanchez will take. I just wonder if uh, Brighton are going to make a change here. I think Stephen Alzate, the Colombian, down in front of us is getting ready to come on. David Connolly. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, a Thiago S pass from Tielemans. You know, looking one way, playing the other. But yeah, it looks like it is going to be a, a change for Brighton. It's a lovely little lift finish. It'll be interesting to see if that means a change of system. He has played as a wing-back in recent weeks. Alzate can play much uh, further forward as well. And it's, uh, what a boost that is for Ryan Atro you know another goal to his name and you'd like to think he's going to stay on the pitch this time I think it was, I it was really harsh on him to come off against Burnley yeah, and Brendan Rodgers was uh, speaking in the build up for this game it was covered in all the papers this morning basically saying we're not going to have Jamie Vardy forever he's uh, obviously in the veteran stage of his career but why can't Iannaccio be the man who fills that considerable void and it's just as a striker as a backup striker for much of his Leicester career that's just what you need to hear I would imagine here's Tavares coming forward for Leicester into the penalty area brilliantly timed tackle by Basuma one he had to make because for a moment there Brighton were outnumbered inside their own box it's Ben White Beckenbauer Ben White carrying it all the way from the edge of the penalty area his own area into the centre circle in the end he stopped in his tracks by Castagna 
This is a really good game now, David. Yeah, it's open, really open. I mean, Leicester have come out in the second half transformed, I've got to say. They've been superb. Here he is, Taveras, just running into that gap in behind. But Basuma with a brilliant foot in. What an interception. From behind, because had he have mistimed it, it would have been a penalty, and it may well have been a red card as well. Long punt upfield by Sanchez. Dan Burnwell forward for Brighton, and Trossard couldn't quite get on the end of it. Cleared away by Daniel Amate, the Ghanaian. And here comes the Brighton change, and Stephen Alzate is going to replace Alexis McAllister. Talk us uh, through that one. Well, I, I don't know whether it's to freshen things up, you know, in terms of keeping the energy, the tempo. It might be a slight little, I, I don't know if it's a shift of formation, but maybe just where the personnel operate. Well, watch how that settles down. He's straight on the ball, Alzate, from the throw by Byrne. Here's Basuma in the centre of the Leicester half, so he plays it low along the ground to Joel Veltman. And Veltman now back towards halfway, trying to drop the shoulder to get away from Tillemans. Veltman with a left-footed ball forward, chested down by Amate. And it should be cleared away, but it isn't. And here's Mope with a chance inside the area. Force wide, Mope. Left-footed shot across the face of goal. Just too many Leicester bodies in the way. I think it was Ricardo who made the block after Sayuncu had been caught out on the edge of the area. And here's Veltman again. Some encouragement for Brighton. Really for the first time in this second half. Putting some pressure on the Leicester back line. Veltman with a cross block by Castagna. And they have a corner. Yeah, so first real attack though with this second half of note. I just wonder though, that return pass to Neil Mope, I think it was just slightly over here. Whether it's Pascal Gross with the pass in the end, but... It was Taifana who gave it away actually, looking for Sion Chu. But it's just a pass from Gross, he took a little bit of weight off that, it was slightly ahead of Mope. He did well to actually gather it under his spell and get a shot off, but... Maybe Gross should be disappointed with the pass to him. Leicester have conceded 10 goals from set pieces this season. Can Brighton make it 11 here? Corner from the right hand side. Pascal Gross lining up to take it. High one into the air. Schmeichel under pressure from Dan Byrne, but he took it cleanly enough. And then a bit of verbals between Schmeichel and Dan Byrne. I wonder where he gets that from. <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite as shouty, is he? No, as his no. Dad. no. There's nothing wrong with that, though, from Dan Byrne. I don't know what Schmeichel was on about, really. And in fairness, Kasper Schmeichel there was uh, having a go at an opposing player. Peter's party trick was rollicking his own centre-backs, wasn't he? Particularly uh, Bruce and Pallister when they were there. Steve Bruce is Newcastle in action live on TalkSport tomorrow against West Bromwich Albion in midday kickoff. He will be keeping an eagle eye on this one to see if Brighton are going to drop more points and stay in the mix for relegation. In comes the cross from Ricardo Lewis Dunk very coolly facing his own goal, just nods the ball into the arms of Sanchez, the goalkeeper, Mark Albright, and another of the uh, Leicester title winners from 2015 is about to come on. Here on game day on Talk Sport 2, 19 minutes to play. Brighton 1, Leicester 1. Trossard trying to pluck a long ball out of the air. Couldn't do so, but Mope has won it back from Fafana. And then Fafana making the tackle. Feels he was fouled by Mope corner kick is the decision from Michael Oliver who had a good view of that I think he was just holding on to him Mope yeah but I actually think Pascal Gross was on here Mope if he'd have just got his head up just slotted it across the box Gross was free that goal that Brighton conceded scored expertly by Anach only the uh, 34th they conceded this season Same number as Liverpool, the defending champions. In comes the corner from Gross over the head of Byrne. It was a poor ball. It actually ended up going out of play almost by the op opposite corner flag over on that far right touchline. They need to be better than that, Brighton. Uh, Tavares' full Premier League debut is coming to a premature conclusion. Mark Albrighton coming on. I guess you could say in some ways that's uh, Leicester's pass replacing Leicester's future. Certainly Brendan Rodgers will be hoping that is the case in terms of Tavares and his contract negotiations. Yeah. But, I mean, look, Mark O'Brien, I think he's a brilliant player. Still got a lot to offer this team, and I think Brendan's been loyal to those players, hasn't he, that have done well for Leicester down the years. This game fascinatingly poised with still 18 minutes to go. 
Pascal Gross trying to get some room for a cross on the right hand side just one twist and turn too many and Leicester have a throw well he came on didn't he he come on for um, Ian Acho, didn't he I think at the weekend or Brighton or certainly came on just to stop that threat from uh, from Burnley you know coming in the box of those so many deliveries but he's probably got a different role here today we'll have to wait and see yeah, it'll be interesting uh, to get a glimpse into the mindset of Brendan Rodgers clearly this was a game that Leicester came here expecting and, and, and needing to win in terms of moving up to second in the Premier League and just relieving some of those fears that maybe they would uh, drop out of Champions League contention for the second season in a row later on having gone 1-0 down having been outplayed in the first half I, I think probably at half time he would have taken a point but now David Conley he will believe that all three are there for the taking again Here's Alzate though, Brighton still a threat on the counter, Lalana with a flick into Alzate, doesn't quite come off this time and maybe that's the difference in Brighton's performance from the first half to the second and Didi finding all Brighton, trying to cross from the right hand side, blocked by Dan Byrne, throw in for Leicester, midway inside Brighton territory, Leicester have won only three of their last eight games in the Premier League plenty of draws along the way only two defeats in 14 league matches here's Ricardo playing it infield to Ndidi Sionchu well forward again a good outlet in this second half Sionchu and he carries the ball out to the left hand side in Castagna they still haven't really got it into Vardy at all have they you know so far in this game he's barely been on the ball I mean Ayanacho is the one that drops in off the front so he's been more in the game but Vardy sort of st still uh, I can't recall him having too much of a you know, in this second half, early anything. I think he's accustomed to that. If you look at the yes, stats over is, the course yeah. of the season, he doesn't get many touches in the opposition penalty area, but the ones that he, he does get do tend to be well, quite decisive. He is obviously the most efficient finisher, we know that, but at times he gets, what, 15 touches a game, something like that, 20? But he, he really is, I don't know how many he's had so far tonight, but... Here he is uh, trying to jostle for position in the centre as Tillemans comes forward down the left. Vardy's down on the edge of the area. Low cross from Tillemans, clear behind it. Will be a Leicester corner. He's only scored one goal, Jamie Vardy, in his last 13 games. I think the fact that Brendan Rodgers is, is talking about succession planning is uh, probably quite telling. Oh, he's still got a few years left in him, Vardy, but I mean, Dunk there knew exactly what he was doing. I think Vardy just got the wrong side of him, so he he made it look as if it was just accidental but just clipped his heels Leicester have their fourth corner of the evening 1-1 one, one the score here on game day on TalkSport 2 at the end of another fascinating Saturday afternoon in comes the corner for Leicester looking for Fofana Sanchez does well again climbs high and takes the ball clean he bowls it out to Adam Lallana still full of running Lallana he plays it out of the right hand side and Trossard knocked it beyond the defender on that far side we might see the first yellow card here. I think it's Tillemans. Tillemans, wasn't it? Yeah. Good clean hands, though, again from Sanchez, who he's had a really good game. The Brighton goalkeeper took that corner well. I mean, I think it would have taken something special to beat him, and, and that, that's what it was from Maya Nacho. Lovely finish, put on a plate. But he's had a really good game, really good save from Tavares in the first half, and he's, his handling has been really good. His start positions have been good, haven't they? It was a bit of a gamble from Graham Potter, deciding to dispense with the services of, of Matty Ryan. One of the strangest stories of the season, that he's now at Arsenal, and is back up to Burnt Leno, but I think Sanchez has done really well since taking that number one jersey. We've got Christian Walton on the bench tonight, someone they rate very highly. Had a lot of loan spells in the EFL. In comes the corner from Gross, flicked on by Veltman, but tamely behind for a goal kick. They haven't really carved a meaningful chance in this second half David Conley Brighton no they haven't and Gross who would, you would normally say is really reliable on these free kicks he had one in the first half which was actually under hit but Lalana just managed to get his head on that one again was under hit and you don't send the likes of Dan Byrne up there and, and, and dunk just to put one in at the near post you know here comes Fafana for Leicester can they find a winner in the final 14 minutes? Here's Albrighton, down by the right corner flag, Burn pokes it out of play for a throw. They've certainly shown character this week, Leicester been behind in back-to-back uh, -back away games, came back to draw at Burnley. And back on level terms here at the Amex as well. 1-1 one, one the score, Amate into Ayanacho, the Leicester goal scorer. Here's Ndidi. 
Soyun Chu picks it up just on the edge of the centre circle. He's going to go all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel. Danny Welbeck will be the next player to come on for Brighton. I mean, those two, Sayonchu and Schmeichel, how many passes have those two had? Because Sayonchu doesn't really want to go out to the left-hand side. What a natural lefty and play invariably ends up coming in field. Welbeck, by the way, just getting his final instructions. Here is uh, Wilfred Ndidi for Leicester. Out to the left-hand side. Back to Sayonchu again. Only Mope and Trossard, the Brighton players, inside the Leicester half at the moment. Amato flicks it over his head out to Ricardo down the right. What a loss he was uh, for the first half of the season. Ricardo, foul there by Fafana on Mope. Five yards inside the Brighton half, and that will be the cue for Danny Welbeck to replace Neil Mope for the last 12 minutes plus added on time. What do you make of that change? Well, I, I thought Neil Mopay did brilliantly for Lalana's goal. Terrific hold-up play. You know, he hasn't really had that many sighters of goal tonight, but he's freshened it up. And, and also, we haven't really seen Adam Lalana go beyond the ball, have we, this second half? You know, that could be a sign of the game taken out of his legs or whatever, but they haven't had as much of a threat going in beyond that, that striker. Danny Welbeck, scorer of a couple of goals this season for Brighton since arriving on a free transfer. Again, like Lalana, probably haven't been able to get him out on the pitch as much as they would have wanted. Here's Alzate, down by the left corner flag, trying to link up with Dan Byrne. Byrne dispossessed by Ricardo, and now Mark Albrighton will try and play it forward for Leicester. Off uh, Basuma out for a throw. Which well, manager will be happier with a point with ten minutes to go? That's a tough one, really. You know, I think certainly Leicester have been the dominant team in the second, just as much as Brighton were in the first. They are the draw specialists in the Premier League, Brighton. This will be their 12th stalemate of the season. But they can still find a winner because Leicester have given it away. Indeed, again. Here is Trossard into the penalty area. Gross into Lalana. Left footed shot. Good save, Schmeichel. Down to his right hand side. I think it was moving awkwardly. And in the end, unconventionally, Schmeichel just turned it behind for a corner. Well, it's a really heavy touch from Ndidi, and as soon as he has that touch and he loses it, Brendan Rodgers spins away in disgust. They're on the attack, Brighton. Lovely little pick out here from Gross. Spots the runner, Lalana. He's on the stretch. He does as best as he can, I think, on his left peg. It's on target. Takes a really good save from Schmeichel. And that might just be the encouragement that Brighton need to push on for the winning goal in the last ten minutes here. They have a corner, which Pascal Gross will take. Again, puts... Both arms skyward with the floodlight shining brightly from that iron roof behind the goal. In comes the corner, cleared by Fafana. And then all Brighton scoops it away and out for a Brighton throw on that far side. Really, this is the first concerted spell of pressure that we've seen from the home team since the half-time break. Well, the positive, I guess, as well for Lano is that he still looks like scoring, you know. He hasn't really been in the game. He, obviously, he's a bit puffed here, you know, put a lot of effort into this fixture, but... Still looks like he's got a goal in him. Lovely little pick out from Gross, though, wasn't it? Great vision to spot the run of him at the back post. Lovely little slide pass into him. Melton with a throw. Cleared by Ndidi. It's not been his most secure performance, Wilfred Ndidi, giving the ball away cheaply on more than one occasion. And it was that sloppiness that led to that latest Brighton chance. There haven't been many for the home side in his second half here on Game Down Talk Sport 2. Cleared by Sayunchu. Dan Byrne heads it back into the penalty area. Welbeck will try and flick it on. And it was an important clearance away by Fafana. And all Brighton gets there ahead of Alzate. Goes long looking for Vardy. Would have the pace to get there ahead of Lewis Dunk. Sanchez knew that and comes away and just yeah. grabs the ball on the edge of the area. The only thing is, I mean, just when all Brighton had his head up to look at Vardy, Vardy then went long and then he checked short to come to feet. But then all Brighton had his head down and just played the ball in behind. So. No, not quite reading each other's movements there. Ben White out to the right-hand side. And Leandro Trossard trying to isolate Soenchu. Drags the big Turkish defender out of position. Still got it down by the corner flag. Two Leicester players now just out muscling Trossard in the end. And it's played forward by Castagna to Tillemans. The two Belgians linking up. Iannaccio can't bring it down inside the centre circle. A bit more threat now about Brighton coming forward Trossard out to the uh, right hand side and Gross who has to sprint to keep it in play and then can only smash it out for a goal kick I mean they don't play like a side Brighton that 
look like relegation candidates, but points-wise, they will still be looking a bit anxious. Yeah. I mean, look, again, they've had the lead and they've lost it, but you wouldn't put it past them to get a goal here. I mean, Welbeck gives them something different that Mope doesn't. He's more of a threat in the air. He'll win those flick-ons, hence they need someone to gamble in behind. It looks like Trossard is that man. Just playing a little bit closer now, isn't he, to, to Welbeck. Well, again, he's got plenty of experience, Danny Welbeck, having uh, won the Premier League with Manchester United, been at Arsenal. On stage, was scoring goals fairly regularly for England, but I don't think he's quite as vocal as someone like Adam Lallana. Someone who does his talking on the pitch rather than in the dressing room, Danny Welbeck. Sarancu taps it forward to Castagna. We've got seven minutes plus added time remaining. Brighton 1, Leicester 1. Leicester has scored 15 goals in the last 15 minutes in the Premier League this season. That's more than any other team. So this is the stage of the game when they normally come into their own. Vardy trying to play out of the right-hand side and all Brighton. Lewis Stunt forcing Albrighton to go back to the halfway line and Amate and here's Albrighton again back to Amate just been a much more confident Leicester that we've seen in the second half the way they manipulated possession they weren't doing that in the opening 45 minutes whatever Brendan Rodgers said to his charges during the interval certainly has had the desired effect I don't think he'll have too many complaints about their second half performance Ricardo up against uh, Byrne and Alzate. It's Byrne who clears it upfield, but only to Amate on the halfway line for Leicester. And this is Sainchu now, the furthest man back for the Foxes. And Didi now in the centre circle. Sprays it out to the left-hand side. Castagna's in some space. Veltman just standing off. And Castagna's gone away from Veltman, but his touch was heavy. Cleared by Basuma inside the Brighton penalty area. And then Veltman forward over the halfway line. Still sitting very deep, David Brighton. Yeah, they are, and obviously when they turn it over, you know, that first pass, they've, they've given it away more or less every time in the last few minutes, so good spell here from Leicester in possession. But you just mentioned it about heavy touch. There's been a couple of heavy touches on this pitch. I mean, it obviously night falls, a bit of zip on the turf, and maybe a few tired legs out there, that touch can get away from you. Yeah, it does look a little bit churned up as well, doesn't it? Yeah. The pitch here at the Amex. You're listening to Brighton against Leicester on TalkSport 2 with WeBuyAnyCar.com. Don't part exchange. Get money off your next car. Go to WeBuyAnyCar.com. Here's Vardy. Trying to get in behind Lewis Dunk, and he's done so inside the penalty area. Dunk dives in. I think this could be a problem for Brighton. The referee says corner. I'm not convinced that that was a particularly well-timed tackle from Lewis Dunk. We're going to get a replay, David Connolly. VAR will be checking. Did he get the ball? I think that's a penalty. You might be right. I mean, it's brilliant skill from Vardy. Ball into his feet. He lets it run through his legs, and then he outpaces Dunk. It's a clean foot race between the pair. He goes to ground, uses his right peg. Don't think there's contact. Vardy goes to ground, and I think this could be a penalty. You're right. Well, Michael Oliver has given 15 penalties in the Premier League this season. That's more than any other referee. He didn't give that one at first sight. VAR and sure that well, having a long look at it. My first reaction was that it was a foul. I've seen a replay. I still think it was a foul. Will Stuart Atwell think the same? No. No. Well, I, I think Brighton have got away with one. And Stuart Atwell, watching on VAR, decided that the on-pitch decision was right, or certainly that it wasn't a clear and obvious mistake. Here's Ricardo with a cross at the corner, having been cleared away. Picked up by Vardy. Vardy running at Byrne. And Byrne plays it behind for a corner. And Brendan Rodgers just having a precautionary look in the direction of the fourth official. Do you understand why that wasn't given? Um, no, to be honest, because it, it did look like, you know, Vardy just nudged it ahead of Dunk. He went to ground and, and obviously tried to make contact with the ball. He didn't. And obviously Vardy's gone flying, so to me it looked like a penalty. Do you know what? I don't know what a penalty is anymore. Or what isn't? It's a uh, foul in the box, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a goal for Leicester. That's what it is. The corner has found Amate. And he scored only his second Premier League goal. I'm not sure that he knew an awful lot about it. 
It was a mistake by Robert Sanchez, the Brighton goalkeeper, who came and missed the corner. It almost just bounced off of Marte and into the back of the net. Leicester City, with two minutes to go, may just have won the game at the Amex. A massive boost for their Champions League hopes and a big blow in terms of Brighton and staying in the Premier League. Sanchez flapping at thin air. And Amate turns it into an empty net. Brighton 1, Leicester 2. Well, it's a really costly mistake here from Sanchez. Had a really good game, I think, obviously. But this is this is a howler. He's come to try and punch it. He palms at the ball. He claws at it. Completely misses it. Goes to the back post. There's Amate just to bundle it home. And what a costly mistake that is from the goalkeeper. Barring that, has had a really good game. But he's cost his team. Well, Sanchez is absolutely furious with himself. Amate... An unlikely goal hero for Leicester as we welcome listeners from Talk Sport. Brendan Rogers punching the air, celebrating with imaginary fans in the away end. What a win this will be for Leicester. Questions being asked about their Champions League hopes at half time when they were 1 0 down. Tremendous character from the Foxes to come back and seemingly win the game here. Seconds after being denied what we felt was a Stonewall penalty. I think VAR and Michael Oliver, David Conley, might just be relieved that Leicester scored from the corner, having not given that penalty. Yeah, I mean, uh, but again, I mean, Vardy, who probably should have had a penalty, kept the ball alive from the following corner, ensuing corner, and then obviously from that corner, they've got the goal. So, he hasn't really been in the game that much, Vardy, but still had an impact on the final outcome by the looks of it. A minute to go here. Brighton 1, Leicester 2. Brighton who'd already chucked away 14 points from winning positions this season well you can make that 17 now unless they can stage a late comeback I mean it's, it's out of character for Sanchez in terms of his handling in this game because he's, he's more or less come and claimed every corner hasn't he with really clean hands but he's completely flapped at that and missed it and here's Iron Acho. Leicester looking for a third goal here. Vardy with a shot lifted over the crossbar. I think they've been terrific in the second half, Leicester. Yeah, it's been a much... Look, they came out much improved. Brighton are making an attacking change. The last roll of the dice as far as Graham Potter is concerned. Eve Basuma is replaced here by Ali Reza Yahambach, the Iranian. In fact, no, that's the uh, Leicester change, the uh, fourth official putting up the wrong board. In, or is it? Chowdhury's coming on for Iheanacho, and your hand match <laughs> is on for Basuma. <laughs> got done there. You confused me. Sorry, the number eight went up, and then obviously Tielemans has run over, so you think he's a number eight. He's the one that's coming off, but it was obviously, as you're, you're right, it was the, the bright number eight, and instead, obviously, Tielemans was getting instructions, so take that back, Alex. We got there in the end. Yeah. And Hamza Chowdhury is on for four added minutes at the end of the game. That's all that separates Leicester now from a really important away victory just to ease the nerves about them collapsing again late in the season Jamie Vardy still beavering away tirelessly and, and he feels he was fouled there by Ben White the assistant flagging for a Brighton throw Brighton will be three points above Fulham if this scoreline stays the same Level on points with Newcastle who play West Brom tomorrow, live on TalkSport. That's a midday kickoff. They are not safe yet, David. No, absolutely not. And there's, you know, Jamie Vardy still scampering around. Obviously could have had the penalty late in the game. Kept the ball alive to win the corner. Still scampering away here in the opposite corner. So although he hasn't been in the game that much, hasn't been on the ball that much, he still, still offers a real threat. And we played 90 seconds of the added on time. Brighton have a free kick. The better team for the first 45 minutes, the Seagulls, but hasn't been that way since half time. And you have to credit Leicester for that. Zalzate nods it across the penalty area. Alana over the top looking for the run of Trossard. Amate just maneuvered his body to make sure that Trossard couldn't get on the end of that. It's collected by Kasper Schmeichel. And he will take as long as he possibly can to get play restarted. Schmeichel still has the ball in his gloves. He's going to play it up into the sky here at the Amex. Plucked down by Veltman. Veltman away from Chowdhury. 
There was a mistake early in the game at Burnley. Gifted the Clarence the opener in midweek. Leicester came back to take a point from that one. They've come back to lead here. And I think uh, four points in those two away games after losing at home to Arsenal live on TalkSport last Sunday will be a satisfactory return for Brendan Rodgers. And here is Trossard down the left-hand side though. The game isn't over yet. We've got 90 seconds of stoppage time still to play. And Lewis Dunk has the ball high up the field for Brighton. Plays it infield to Pascal Gross. Chipped into the area. Dunk on the end of it. Across the face of goal. Burn can't get there. From inside the six-yard box, Lewis Dunk did everything right there, angling his header across the face of goal. And the tallest man on the pitch, David Conley, couldn't get on the end of it. I'm not the tallest man on the pitch. <laughs> oh, Dan Byrne, yeah. I mean, look, it's not a bad ball, this, in terms of Dunk going up for the last couple of minutes. He might as well just stay there. They pick him out on the diagonal. Great header back across goal, but it's just in front of Dan Byrne. And that might be Brighton's last chance of an equaliser. Another costly defeat here. And they've got a difficult run of fixtures to come between now and the end of the season as well. It's all getting a li little anxious for Graham Potter. Although their next two games, big ones, Southampton away from home. That's next Sunday, live on Talk Sport. And then Newcastle here at the Amex. On Saturday, March the 20th, they need to win at least one of those two games you feel because they've got Manchester United, Everton, Chelsea, Leeds, Manchester City and Arsenal still to play between now and the end of the season. Oh, it's That's a foul by Lewis Dunk and that will be the last action surely. Yeah, I mean we spoke about this ball not being a bad one on the diagonal. They put Dan Byrne up there on the diagonal, put Dunk as well but just that crossfield pass from Beltman is under here. Dunk tries to recover, it makes the foul and that could be the last real chance of the game for Brighton. Yeah, Schmeichel to take the free kick for Leicester. Five yards outside his own penalty area. This is going to go down towards Jamie Vardy and towards the left corner flag. I'm absolutely certain of that. And indeed, Schmeichel does play it out to that left-hand side. Over the head of Vardy. But there goes the full-time whistle. A priceless win for Leicester City to cement themselves firmly in the top four. They leap above Manchester United into second place for 24 hours at least it didn't look that way at half time Adam Lallana with his first Brighton goal crowning a dominant performance from the host but for the second time in a week Leicester showing their powers of recovery two goals in the second half Ian Acho with a deft finish into the corner on 63 minutes then Daniel Amati after a mistake from Sanchez right at the end of the game seconds after being denied what we felt was a stonewall penalty Brighton once again taking the lead and fouling to win they are right in the thick of the relegation battle now but Leicester City well they were asked coming into these two away games is it happening again are they going to fall away in terms of Champions League qualification again well the answer based on that second half is an emphatic no Brighton won Leicester City too.